Difficulties. We all have them. There are many different types, phobias and fears, but also mental and physical health conditions. Unfortunately, every single person in this world, including you, has one. You should never feel ashamed. We are human after all, not robots. I was once trypanophobic, which means a fear of needles. During this talk, you will see why this is no longer true. I will explain one of the difficulties I've had in the last years and how I am still overcoming it. My name is German Latipov, I am 11 years old and I will tell you my difficulty. On Friday the 4th of September 2020, I went to Moscow for a blood check as COVID-19 spread and doctors in England were cautious. It was just an ordinary checkup and my symptoms were tiredness and spots on my face. My parents just thought I had some allergy, but they were soon shocked with fear as it was much worse than that. My mum cried an ocean full of tears, but I was clueless from what was happening. I was taken to the hospital and had blood tests every morning. In addition, I had MRI scans, blood transfusions, lumbar punctures, and a whole load more. My dad would not be able to come inside because of COVID-19, so he brought me takeaway, and my mom would have to meet him at the front door. The only way I could contact him was through the window. I also had great support from my aunt and her husband. They brought me supplies. After about eight days, I was moved to a bigger and nicer hospital. They did a couple of checkups and some intravenous therapy, and I was there for around six days. Then my mom told me the doctor said we would carry a few more checkups and we had to travel to Munich in Germany. I was fine. I didn't ask any questions. I just chose to think it's all okay. So we landed in Germany and went to a hotel. After two days, we were hospitalized. My mom was told I had cancer even though I was still clueless for three more months. Soon after, we began chemo to treat leukemia, cancer of the blood. This began the very toughest part of my 11-year-old life. Over the next year, I had way more side effects than the average child, including forgetting how to walk, unbearable pain over my body, reactions to chemo such as shaking uncontrollably, and a bunch of vomit and heart surgery. That was only around 5% of my side effects. I would not wish my brain in pain on anyone. I only found out I had cancer in November 2020. For some reason, I felt no emotion. I did not know how to feel, just blank. One of the craziest things that happened was that you, you are usually hospitalized for around two weeks, but I usually stayed for one month. In the, full, in the first dose of chemo, I had to stay in the hospital for two months due to chest pain, leg pain, stomach pain, and rib pain. Later in the year, I seemed to have adjusted to it in some way, but there were still moments where I had issues, like passing out, for example. At the time, I also had a Hickman catheter planted inside my right chest. Due to this, I had to be cautious, even though it was stitched into my skin. I most likely didn't have the strength anyway, but this prevented me from being allowed to play any type of sport. The only thing I really enjoyed doing was playing video games, as you don't have to use any part of your body. Except your brain and arms. This kept me going all the way through. I loved playing Valorant and Red Dead on my laptop. Playing these games let me escape the pain. Gaming is therapeutic and in my view can help refocus the mind. Because my chemo had hormones, my appetite had gone down at certain times and I would only desire a single food, or sometimes I wouldn't eat at all. However, there were also lots of kids in the hospital, so it was nice to make friends. And when we had good days, we ordered a cheeky McDonald's. You wanna know my order? Well, I'm gonna tell you anyway. A plain hamburger, a bottle of medium Sprite, medium fries and 20 McNuggets. I just loved it. I also had my brother and sister visit from London, which I was happy about because I hadn't seen them in around five months. My mum was also a great help. She was always there by my side no matter what. Mum, I will forever be grateful for your support. Despite finding ways to get free chemo, my mum remembers June 2021 as the most dangerous moment. I had pneumonia, so the, so the doctors did some extra checkups. One of these routine checks was a CT scan, which creates a picture that doctors can check on a computer screen.
By chance, they, discover, they discovered an abdominal or aortic aneurysm. This is a bulge in the main blood vessel running from your heart to your tummy. If this bulge bursts, it is very dangerous. A rupture may never occur, but if it does, it is fatal in 80% of cases. Ruptured aortic aneurysms cause 5,000 deaths in the UK each year, but mostly affect smokers and people over 65. In my case, the bulge grew very large, and the doctors were, was very worried it would burst and cause internal bleeding and death. Because I already had cancer, this made me even more at risk. Me and my mum were evacuated to a hospital 10 kilometers away for emergency heart surgery for the next morning. I did not know back then, but I could have easily died last June. The doctor said I might not make it, and my mum tells me she cried during the surgery and prayed I came back alive. Because of my aneurysm, I have a tube inside me to keep my heart pumping. I will always be grateful to my doctors, nurses, and surgeons, especially Professor Schmidt and Dr. Binder. If I did not have pneumonia, there would be no CT scan. If there had been no CT scan, I would not be alive right now. So don't cheat McDonald's for me. One story I'd like to share is on my 10th birthday. The day before, I had heart surgery, which meant I had no appetite. I remember, I remember my birthday cake and not in the hospital. It had a footballer with the German number 19 on the back. Blowing out those 10 candles was very tiring, but I was happy to have at least some birthday in hospital. After two years of struggle, I returned to school on the 22nd of November, 2021. I was still sick and missed many days, but I was back. My friends treated me like a king, and I'd like to give a big shout out to them. But especially to Nicola and Sadko, I know were worried about me every day when I was sick. Some children might not like school, but I was happy to be back, so happy. Back with my friends and back to normality. Even though I still take medication, I live a normal life again, and I am blessed to be alive. The school welcomed me back with open arms, and I want to thank my teachers, Ms. Watt, Mr. Kitchen, but most of all, Ms. Shakavati, for helping my recovery and return to school. I still look really ill when I came back, with gas in my stomach and big eye bags, but they made me feel welcome and included. If I went through all that at the age of nine, I think you can definitely go through your difficulty. We all have them, but we all have the strength to overcome them. Be tough, but also accept from other people who care. Some difficulties come at the most inconvenient times. Try to see them as a way to grow and become a better person. It will be tough, but I believe you can do it. Have a think, be honest, what is my difficulty? Who could help make it better? These are quite tough questions to ask, but I promise you that it will be worth it. Thank you for listening.